Good morning, my darlings. Welcome to a brand new vlog. Today, today's video was a potential <laughs> video for the first day of Vlogmas because Charlie and I are going to be properly, properly decorating the house phase one for Christmas today. And I feel like I've been saying, oh, we're decorating for Christmas today in so many recent vlogs, um, but <laughs> I've promised it and then it's not happened because we've needed to like set aside proper time to do it. And today's the day, we literally put it in our diaries <laughs> and today is the day. The tree's gonna get decorated. Norman and Nigel, the gnomes are coming out. Vanilla's actually already out, Vanilla the pheasant. We're gonna get all the decorations out from the store and properly decorate the house for Christmas. So I was gonna film this and save it and have it as day one vlogmas, but I just, I can't put my vlogs up in non-chronological order. It just messes with my mind. I have too much going on in my head to think about the continuity. Like my nail varnish would have gone back to my old nail varnish and I don't wanna have to hide the Christmas decorations in the house. So yeah, you're getting it today. So today is the honorary early premature start to vlogmas but not really. <laughs> anyway, I digress. You might be able to hear the church bells are going off really beautifully in the background. Um, today is Remembrance Sunday, so <laughs> I've, actually had, I've actually cried twice this morning. Firstly, tears of happiness or tears of laughter because I was watching Michael McIntyre's um, We All Do This at Christmas YouTube video. Hilarious, I would highly recommend watching it and I was crying while putting my makeup on um, So I've probably got 9,000 layers of foundation on where I just kept adding it and then they started ringing the church bells um, five minutes ago at 10 o'clock in the morning to um, Start off the remembrance Sunday service. Obviously today is the day that we remember. Oh, I don't want to cry <laughs> Remember all of those that gave their lives to the world wars. It's one of the things I love most about living in this house is listening to the church bells. Obviously we did live in this house last November, last Remembrance Sunday, but it was, I think it was lockdown, um, so no one could go to the service, which was such a shame. I think the church bells did ring but probably not as dramatically because they would have had to have socially distanced um, in the bell ringing chamber. So I don't think it was this dramatic last year. But I think Charlie and I will go for a little walk down to the church just before 11. What time is it now? Quarter past 10. Um, <laughs> so I'd better get dressed and do my hair. I had a little play around with some new beauty products this morning. And by the way, how epic are these pajamas? If you watch to the end of my last vlog, they are so soft and I think they look so luxurious and they are from Mint Velvet. I'll leave them linked down below. And I have also just spritzed myself with Santal Pau Rosa from Galan. And oh my goodness, this is such a gorgeous fragrance. It's the perfect mix between a beautiful, deep, kind of sensual rose, but also with a bit of an oud note to it. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's definitely the most mature um, and rich rose fragrance I think I have ever smelled. So I think this is a strong contender to be my festive fragrance. Um, and also had a lovely delivery from the Dior beauty team. We have got, I think I actually had this <laughs> last year as well, and I might even still have it so I could possibly give this to a friend. Oh, it's actually a different colour this year. Last year it was silver. This is their glittery top coat nail varnish. Very, very bougie nail varnish. Uh, we've got a Atelier of Dreams Rose de Ver Satin Lipstick. Let's have a look at this. Gosh, the Dior packaging really is, there we go, quite spectacular. Look at that. Look at, can you see? My camera really does not want to focus on this, but can you see that beautiful, I can't actually figure out what it is, but there's, it's like a sketch of a building, don't know which building, um, but a sketch of a building embossed on the lipstick. And then we have, oh my goodness, this is beautiful, the most gorgeous eyeshadow palette. This is the Longwear Creamy Powder Palette, high color eyeshadow wardrobe from Dior Beauty. Oh my goodness, that is just stunning. 
exactly the kind of shades that I wear regularly. I don't know why brands insist on putting these little brushes in with your eyeshadow palette. Let me know down below if you have ever, <laughs> ever used them. And then we have the Dior Show 24 Hour Stilo and it is in like a taupey brownie bronze, which is absolutely perfect for the little flick that I have been putting on my eyes lately. I could also use this deep shade with my Charlotte Tilbury brush, um, but that's perfect for giving my eyes a little bit of definition over the festive period. So a really gorgeous delivery from Dior Beauty. Thank you very much to the team. Okay, my darlings, I have just got back from the Remembrance Remembrance Sunday service down at the memorial area in the village. It was a really, really nice turnout. So many people there from the young brownies and guides. I used to be a brownie and a guide when I was little, um, up to the elderly community. And it was just a really lovely service. Back home now, I have added some curls to my hair and Charlie is getting started with brunch because we need full bellies ahead of doing the Christmas decorations today. On my lap here, I have got the most wonderful selection of jewelry, which I'm about to embellish myself with. We're not just decorating the Christmas tree today, we are decorating <laughs> myself. So as this video goes live, will be the very, very start of the infamous, we've been talking about it so much already, Cyber Week. It is officially starting and I have just hit publish on today's version of the Cyber Week blog post. So head over to that if you'd like to see the best deals of the day. So as I promised, I have worked really closely with some of my all time favorite brands to bring the deals to you sooner. And darlings, today, if you click the link in the description box, I'll leave it at the very, very top. I'm giving you early access to the Astrid and Mew Cyber Week sale. This is one that I have been so excited to share with you because their current collection is just, I think it's my favorite collection they have ever done. So I thought I would go through a few of my favorites with you, whether it is for you to inspire um, things you might want to treat yourself to or things that you know someone that you love would absolutely love to receive at Christmas. There are just so many beautiful designs from um, little ear cuffs, which I have been really getting into lately. Let me start by popping that one in. If you want to get that kind of cool girl look, Astrid and Mew is certainly the brand that I think of first when it comes to ear cuffs. For me, Astrid and Mew pieces are just that perfect price point. They have got such, in my opinion, incredibly good prices for such beautiful demi-fine jewellery. And the thing that I love about their pieces is that they are so, so timeless. And I wear them all the time, but they don't tarnish, which is saying something considering the price points of the pieces. So let me actually show you these in a box to start with. Um, this would be an amazing gift for someone that I've got a lot of friends that work in like PR and marketing and they're quite quite cool very fashionable um, But they don't want to be seen to be making too much of an effort I'm sure we've all got friends like that and these are the little hoops that I have picked out Which I think would be perfect for one of my friends in particular. I've got someone in mind um, For these and I've also got my own pair. So they are just a really really classic hoop earring. Do I have it here? Yes. I have also got the matching ring to this collection. I really ought to learn to put fake tan on my hands before showing you jewellery. Um, but that's just a really subtle, you know, can't go wrong. Everyone loves this kind of classic hoop. So that is my choice for my friend that's very cool, but very, very stylish. She's the kind of gal that wears like sleek black dresses, Celine sunglasses those kind of vibes. Okay, and then this is between two friends who I'm potentially going to give these to, but I love the moon and the astrological pieces that Astrid and me have got in their new collection, matches my nails. So this is a simple hoop. These are actually made from recycled sterling silver, and then they are gold plated and the little celestial um, crescent moon is cubic zirconia. I love how jewellery brands are really stepping it up when it comes to sustainability and yet the quality is not impacted. You're not getting a lower quality product. If anything, you just get that extra warm fuzzy feeling and knowing that it is sustainably made. So these are a really subtle nod to that kind of celestial trend. I wouldn't even call it a trend. I feel like celestial jewellery is just always in fashion. So as I mentioned, price point wise, Astrid Mew, considering the quality of the materials is so incredible. Full price, these would be 60 
25 pounds but yes you get early access to 25 percent off all the details for that are in the description box down below and then i have another pair of celestial inspired earrings let me just first put on my ring stack because my hands feel totally naked um including the most beautiful sparkler of all time how gorgeous is this is that focusing absolutely love that I'm loving wearing this pearl ring as well, quite a chunky one. Let's layer up on my middle finger as I usually do. So we've got the sparkly one here and then my usual layers here. The matching one to the first earrings that I showed you. Um, and then these are both, I think these are from the Celestial Collection as well. And you might remember I showed you these recently. So these are the Parve Glimmer Huggies. Oh my gosh. One of my favorite pairs of earrings, if not my favorite pair of earrings at the moment. Um, they match the ring. And darlings, if you follow me on Instagram, gosh, there's so much going on right now. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen that today, yes, same day that the video goes up, I have published a post which is launching a competition where you can actually win all the Astrid and Mew jewelry that I'm wearing in that post, which does include my favorite Parve Glimmer Huggies. So definitely go and check out that post. I'll leave a link to that post in the description box down below if you'd like to go and see it. But as I was saying, okay, I think, oh, it's between those Huggies and these that are my all time favorite Astrid and Mew earrings. I think these are just absolutely gorgeous. So these are the Crystal Star Hoops. Once again, you have got the sparkling cubic zirconia. If you have got multiple piercings, I think these would be a really great place to start layering, perhaps with some more simple designs as well. Um, but to be honest, I will just wear earrings like this throughout the festive season. And I just think these are absolutely beautiful. And did I mention again, full price, these are 65 pounds as well, which I think is incredible especially when you compare to other jewelry brands of this quality i think this price is very very fair and also gold plated you can also get them in silver and rose gold on recycled sterling silver so i think today because i have got the ruffles on my shoulder i'm just going to go for a plain pendant astrid and mew have also got some beautiful horoscope necklaces zodiac signs there is of course the entire celestial collection um if i open my jewelry drawer i can show you some of my favorites from that my jewelry drawer is overflowing now, I don't know if it'll be back in stock, but I will remind you about it just in case, because this is probably one of you guys, your favorite necklaces of mine that I have worn all year, which is this chunky chain with the pearl from Astrid and Mew as well. So you could get 25% off this one if it is still in stock. If it is, then of course, I'll leave a link down below. If it's not, then I would suggest adding it to your wish list because this has been one of my most worn necklaces all year. And then we've got my chunky chain, whoops. And then we've got my chunky chain bracelet. And then this is another daily favorite as well. Just a really simple plain chain. You could add charms onto this if you want to, but personally, I just like to layer up the chains. There's always a version of um, the classic chain necklace on Astrid and Mew if either of these is sold out. So I'll leave the most similar one um, linked down below. And what else can I show you? Gosh, there's just so many favorites. I could literally be here for hours. Of course, not forgetting my gorgeous um, Celeste steel hoop earrings a chunky hoop they match my rings <laughs> i literally feel like captain jack sparrow Ooh, i don't know if these might actually be the ones that i want to wear today so again i'm gonna have to give you a close-up so from the front you might think oh she's wearing plain kind of lovely dangling elegant gold hoops but from the side you have got this beautiful sparkle and it's kind of like a horseshoe shape. I'm not sure the technical name for this earring. I believe these are called the Ara um, and I believe that this is the Ara ring. I am actually gonna pop these in just to show you but I'm probably gonna end up putting my stars back in because feel like they're the ones. So when you're popping these in, you do have to be careful that you get it the right way round because you don't want to waste the Parve cubic zirconia and have it facing your neck because your neck won't appreciate their beauty. You need to make sure that you wear them so that the Parve is on the outside. I'm not sure how visible this is on camera, but so you can see from the majority of angles, they just look like a really elegant, plain and simple um, gold stretched out hoop, I would call them. They're still hoops, but then 
I really don't know how I best I really don't know how best I can show you when you get caught from a certain angle you can really see the parve sparkles in there which is so beautiful do you know what I take back what I've said actually about your neck not appreciating the sparkles because I guess it depends on the angle of your ears if your ears are quite flat to your head yeah I take it back I take it back because actually if your ears are <laughs> okay this is gonna sound really weird but if your ears go out <laughs> more than mine you might want to wear it the other way around but if your ears are more pinned back than mine or the same then actually you do want to wear them this way around because then the parfait is closest to your face okay forget everything i've said wear them whatever way around you like either your neck or slightly from behind is going to get to appreciate them but they are gorgeous such a different design i've never seen anything like this before and again 65 pounds that must be the happy that must be the price point that astrid and Mew customers are most happy with but darlings make the most of this 25 percent off i think it is such an amazing deal I don't think it's going to get any better than this and as always I have got my edit of all of my favourites, um, they'll all be linked in the description box down below. You can also, there is also a page which is my personal edit from the website where they're all in one place on the Astrid Amir website which is so amazing. You can see this wish list Josie's edit um, again, I'll leave it linked down below and there'll be another edit, shoppable edit over on my blog. So happy shopping! I hope you guys get to make the most of that discount code. Now, have I got odd earrings in? Yes, I do. I think I'm... No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep the stars in. I'm going to wear these tomorrow, though. And of course, if you are in the market for something ultra classic, you can obviously just get the classic hoops from Astrid and Mew as well. I'm actually going to take off the massive pearl ring today um, because I don't think it will be the most practical for Christmas tree decorating, but I'm going to keep my everyday stack on and my beautiful ring. Maybe I'll reduce to one bracelet. Got to think practical after all. So now my job while Charlie finishes brunch is to go and get all the Christmas decorations out of the um, grain store and then it's time to put some festive music on in the drawing room and start decorating our tree. So we have to fuel up before our Christmas decorating begins. Charlie has prepared sausage sandwiches. These are Dickie's sausages. We've had These them in the freezer. Bloody Mary ones. Bloody Mary. So Dickies is a brand, they do some really cool sausage yes, flavours. Yes, my sausage brand. No, don't talk about eating sausages, it's so rude. You see, mummy, they might have a copyright issue with me, I've got my lawyers on it. Yes, I am I the only the sausage that's allowed to be called Dickie. on a bus advert? Yes. It was 118cheaplawyers.co.uk. <laughs> Gosh, we're bonkers. Thank you, darling. In case anyone ever wondered if Charlie Irons sits still and relaxes and does nothing, the answer is no. What are you busy doing at the moment, darling? Right. Well, we have... <laughs> uh, you've not featured this yet, have you? I have, yep. Oh, you have? Yep. <clears throat> so, obviously, it's the new oven from Della Vita. This is the one that we're keeping, which is amazing. British Racing Green. Mm -hmm. now, How funny. Do... That's the same name as the Arga sample we were given. Oh, sorry, two seconds. Dickie, <laughs> we don't go in the flower bedroom. Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> that way, please. <laughs> um, the... Uh, yeah, I don't actually think it's well, it's not it's not called British Racing Green yet. They're they're doing the competition to name oh, yeah. the colour. It was Bentley Green, wasn't it? Well, yeah, but I, they're not allowed to call it Bentley Green. <laughs> well, Bentley's a name, isn't it? I don't know. There's all sorts. Maybe of Bentley have copyrighted I, I, it. I don't. I think I think they'll come up with a really cool name. But anyway, what we're doing is we're curing it, which we didn't have to do with the previous one because it was a secondhand, you know, a previous sample. Used oven. Yeah. So the process. What well, I've done it slightly wrong in that I've let it go out, but I think it will still be fine. You start a fire here at the front and cure that area because basically inside it's quite a complex oven with all the ceramic. So you need to, to heat it up like this to cure the inside before you do a full on fire with the big old wood. Oh. It's going to crack in it. So it's the whole process. Often Marco will actually come and do it for you. Right. Or someone from Della Vita will, will send you instructions. There is a video online. Um, but yeah, that's what we're doing. So I'm going to light the fire in the middle now. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, and then we'll be uh, pushing it to the back. And then the plan is we're going to use it on Monday, aren't we? As in tomorrow, so. Are we? Yeah, we are. Oh, Tuesday, sorry. It's going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I 
isn't it? Lighting, <laughs> is it? How funny. Maybe they've got wet. Oh, there we go. So here we have the blank canvas and I have made myself, well actually this is a pumpkin spice latte ready to go. If you guys have any recommendations on festive syrups to add to your coffee, let me know. Is there a good gingerbread syrup? And before we get started, the obligatory Christmas playlist on the Sonos. This is the best Christmas song. I think we're going to get quite a lot of assistance today. Are we tiring you already, little chicken nugget? What do you think? Where should we put the sausage dog themed tree this year? Mummy, Daddy, I love that you have a tree completely in honor of me. I'm so, so, so privileged. I feel so grateful. Oh, yes I do. We've decided we are going to style up the bookcase before we get stuck stuck into all things festive. So you might remember this is the bookcase that we got um, from Brown Rig antiques and did you actually buy those faux books yet? Um, we, uh, <laughs> we don't need faux books I don't think because we've got plenty of actual genuine books. Oh okay. So I don't, I think it seems a bit enough to put faux books in there. So the idea is we're going to style it up today, the big decision, and I think I'll come up with a solution. Basically, we obviously have, no, like this area needs light, mm. doesn't it? Like that looks good I think, obviously. We've got a lamp here, we're going to get a more vintage lamp here eventually, but we haven't found one. What have you got on your top, darling? This is just something I spilled earlier. <laughs> Here's one I made earlier. Yeah, this is from the kitchen, is it look really bad? <laughs> well, I'm going to go get changed in here. Put your Christmas jumper on, yeah, mate. In a lovely new t-shirt, Charlie is now going to explain... Fresh t-shirt. Fresh t-shirt. What's the lighting situation in the cupboard then? So we have, we have a lamp like that, don't we, that was behind the bookcase. Yes. Now obviously when you look at this wall now, there's just not enough light, I don't think. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hoping to do is, we'll have the bookcase moved out slightly and the electrician, I'm hoping, will be able to wire the light that's there, that's on this switch. What Charlie means is that there is the same um, setting, so with the electricity the coming out the wall, that this, the, the moment, same here the moment, is also this behind this turns. bookcase, so hopefully we'll be able to use the wires from that to plug in some lamps within the bookcase. Well, yeah, they won't be a plug. I don't even think, well, I don't know how it works. I'm not an electrician, but she should be able to connect three of these mini lamps with smaller fluted hats on them mm -hmm. to have them staggered throughout the bookcase one in each chamber, all yeah. day, I reckon. We could have one in each end, but then I feel like it will look weird in the middle. I think you have to have one in each I think end. we should have a high one in the middle to be a mirror of the light on the other side of the room. Yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah. But anyway, and so then obviously when we're doing the shelving now, we're gonna put the shelves in. I think we need to have it in mind because I don't want to redo them, they're quite a hassle. The height have of the lamps. In mind the height of the lamps. Okay. Um, now obviously we're not gonna have the perfect amount of books yet, but we have got quite a lot of like, I've ordered quite a few sort of old antique looking books, which should work. Nice. There. I mean, most of the books are books we would legitimately like to read, like stuff about historic ones or Shakespeare or history of England. Ooh, let's show everyone the George Smith swatches that we've got. Oh uh, yeah. So, the dream sofa is going to be ready in March, April time, because it's a 14 to 16 week lead time. Now these are the three mohair, mm -hmm. and I believe this is the cotton velvet. Cotton velvet's slightly cheaper. I like the this mohair. The I like. See, that's interesting. See, I, I, I do really like that, and it's quite a rusty colour. Mm. The only thing I'd say is, I think that this could work really well in here as a bold yeah, statement colour. But look at how dusty it is, even just now, and with your OCD. Well, they're all going to be like that because that's mohair. You, you know, I know what you mean. You'll notice it more on a darker colour. Especially when one of your children is a floof well, we know, we don't know. I think we're I think we're in agreement that it's one of those two, isn't it? I love that, but it's slightly it's too bland for in here. Yes. Um that would work in here, but I I'm not mm. I, I don't Because we're probably it. gonna keep like these cushions and I think that well, that would, tones yeah. in better. Well uh, yeah, I mean my opinion would my you based on the expense of a big sofa, you can't base your decision on what cushions. No, you've got, but I you think can change that... the cushions. 
cushions can always be I think be it goes with everything. It, it, yeah, I, I wouldn't base your decision on cushions though. I'm not, mate. Um, I, it's more about, it's, the, it's the, most, one of the, the most expensive thing in this room right now, individually, is the rug. So the, it needs to work with the rug first and foremost. I, I still, th I don't know. I, I'm on the fence with it. I think my colour's best, isn't it? I do really like the rusty colour, so I wouldn't even say that I'm... I just, I just feel like... I don't know, let's also compare it to the fabrics of the other... Um, the other so, like, for example, like, the contrast. Ooh. I think that. No. And then if you look over here... He's positioned himself so that no matter where you and I are, he can see us. I know are what you... you mean, I do really like that. Okay, let's end the conversation here then. <laughs> yeah, I think, no, I actually do think you're right on that. I like this I've color. got that on film. Yeah. And it's not a question of you, you, who's right, who's wrong. I think <laughs> like, well, it's in this here. No, honestly, yeah. I think you will be very happy with that decision. Yeah, I think, do you know why also, that is the same colour, isn't it, that we always look at the farmhouse? Yes. Actually, in fact. Because that could look a little bit modern. Here we go. Oh, see, I, I disagree. I would say that the dark colour is more traditional, but we're not mm. we're not going crazy traditional in here. Look at the lampshades; like they're not crazy traditional. Mm. Um, it's funny how taste change because I really liked that lamp when we first got it, but I really don't like it. Now. I think it's because it's so obviously like an imitation. Not, yeah. So, for example, I found online there's a website called Antique Floor Lamps, and they re <laughs> they restore antique floor lamps. So like something Ooh. like that, I think. So it's like that, but it's a legitimate. Yeah. Um, and it, like it's a, and they're not. They're actually, funnily enough, they're not. Oh, I like that one. Weren't you going to show me a picture of a sofa? Yeah. So if I go in my drawing room, inspo folder. So firstly, that's not dissimilar. Yep. That is literally. Yep. Very similar. Um, and then also these sofas that we always talk about that we like. Yeah, the farm, it's literally the colour that. That is probably. Do you know what? That is actually probably the same, the same fabric because it is George, George Smith. Smith. Yeah. And actually, funnily enough, our curtains. Yeah. And our seats here are going to be similar to that. Good. So I yeah I think in a way we've come round to look these are all we've got a deal mate pictures and funnily enough yeah look, all terracotta that's a similar colour to so what, you that's actually at, that's that is the, the colour that you Duke. had in your head the whole time that's at the double red yeah. well we we both Ooh, did didn't we bookcase inspired. that's where yeah I think right that's I'm excited crowded. to fill the bookcase should we um, um, get cracking and then the one thing that I've always had in my head I do like the sort of rustic linen I against do but that not for in here get I mean look that's against like more of a reclaimed wood kind of thing. Anyway, right. I'm going to put you on a time lapse and we are going to get filling this bookcase. So the tree has been fanned out and we are now about to start the bauble process, which I let Charlie take the lead on because he has got the creative eye for where the baubles can be positioned. These are our fanciest baubles, the ones we've collected over the years. Um, the tray that Charlie's just rummaging through is usually our family room, family room collection, so slightly more personal. But we've got a really lovely collection of baubles this year, ranging from these beautiful big glass ones that I just threaded up from um, Dalesford. And then we've got some gorgeous ones from last year. These beautiful glass ones were from... <laughs> You're so needy today, my sweet boy. Um, these beautiful glass ones here are from Burford. We got them from Burford Garden Company last year. Yeah, they're lovely. These are probably some of my absolute favorites. Um, these ones we got in the Soho Home Sale. They go really nicely with the colors of the room. So yeah, and I think we've got some Gisela Graham ones. Uh, some Cox and Cox ones all mixed in. You're very smelly, baby. You're emitting a nervous really smell. Bad breath. You do have very bad breath. Right. Okay, let's get more decorations out. Let's get cracking.
process so far is looking good. We've had to move a little bit of the furniture in the room to get to all angles of the tree. We've got a few baubles left to do after we've had a toad in the hole for our dinner. But all of our favorite, excuse me, bunny rabbit. Excuse me, sweet one. Have you been helping? No, you haven't. You've been snoring the whole time, you funny little bunny. Yes. Most of our favourites are now up on the tree. I must say, over the years, Charlie and I have become a little bit um, of a Christmas decoration snob. <laughs> so I thought I would share with you a few of our favourites. It's mostly these beautiful glass ones. And to be honest, I think the best place to get good quality Christmas tree decorations is garden centres, especially the Burford Garden Company near us. And Dalesford, they tend to have the best ones. These ones we've had for a little while from Swarovski. They're rather gorgeous as well. I think Charlie got these lovely glass ones from Etsy. That's another good place to look. Um, and then just a few nice ones which we've collected over the years. The really personal ones um, are not out yet. They're gonna go in the tree, on the tree rather, in the family room, but there's still some fun, unique ones on this tree, like this parachuting chap, we've got a key. I think we might get a few more of these glass ones in the green and the red from Dalesford. And I think what I'm gonna look out for, I'm gonna have a look online now, is for clusters of clementine slices and cinnamon with some ribbon. I think that'll add a nice different texture to the tree because it's all quite samey at the moment. Ah, uh, Dicky, no! Dicky, no! And then a few of our other favourite decorations. These ones, you can't really tell by looking at them, but they're very weighty. They look like antique glass. They've almost got the same mottling detail as a lot of the antique mirrors in this house. And these are from Cox & Cox. Cox & Cox have got a really nice selection at the moment. I think you can kind of tell what the quality is going to be like by the price. They have got some great shatterproof ones, which are really perfect for the lower layers. Um, like for example, you're so needy. Let's see which one's on here. Oh, Cox and Cox. I think like these ones, for example. But then yes, I've got some really nice antique looking ones and lots of smaller antique ones, which are great for the upper layers of the tree. And they're really nice and heavy. They just feel really good quality. I've got one more box here from Cox and Cox to undo. And it is these baubles with the beaded section. And they're, I'd say like a pewter. Not really silver, not really gold. The only thing I would say is that there is a lot of plastic. These are all double wrapped. So you've got the, the bubble wrap and then a plastic bag. This plastic bag, I would say, is definitely something that could be removed. Cox and Cox, if you're watching. And I'm not sure they all need to be individually labeled either, because that's just going to take me a little bit of time to get rid of all these labels. Just a little bit of constructive feedback. of tidying Charlie has been cooking up a storm and it smells so good in here what's that darling right so we're, we're not doing a roast today just because of the timing yeah but we are having toad in the hole because we're using up some stuff we have in the freezer where does Christmas. that expression come from no idea it's a very British dish though so your American followers I don't know if hang on know. American followers leave in the comments right now what you think toad in the hole is if you don't know I bet there'll be some quite comical guesses. Pause the video now, or anyone that's not British, pause the video now and let us know what you think Toad in the Hole is. Okay, unpause. Char, do you want to reveal what it is? Right, so it's essentially where if, if bangers and mash met Yorkshire pudding. So it's sausages in a Yorkshire pudding-like batter. Often yeah. you would add like ale or Guinness or something to batter. We've not done that. Oh really? I didn't normal, know that. We've just done a normal batter. Mm -hmm. So this is exactly like you would make Yorkshire puddings. If you come and show, look, you will see it's rising wow. away. And the sausages will be in, I can't open it, mm -hmm. but the sausages will be in the middle of it. Amazing. Um, and then I've tried something new, which is part of a Jamie Oliver thing where you <clears throat> you squeeze out two or three sausages <laughs> with the with the so out of the skin. Right. And with have the red onion. More dicky sausages. Yeah. 
So we have nice. a little sausages today. <laughs> we are. And then, um, but we're using them hard. Yeah. Um, and then there's red onion in here. We're trying to clear freezer space for uh, Christmas, aren't and we? And obviously this is my normal gravy. Um, yeah, I'm losing heat in the agar, that's why it's still quite watery. Ah. Which is a bit worrying. Can add a bit of flour, can't you? Away. Could add a bit more. Or you could add your now. favourite, Bisto. <laughs> And then this, I'm just going to add in once I've sieved that. So there is going to be a bit of texture to the gravy, but it's going to be like meaty texture. Then we've got leek and peas, mm -hmm. and we're going to have mash with it. I mean, we're going to have probably too much food for me and your mum, but... Because uh, normally, I don't know whether people would normally do mash with you with it, but I feel like... Yeah, I think it needs it. Because it. it can be quite boring otherwise. A lot mm. of people literally have sausage in New York's pudding and that's it. Normally, so. I would do it with like steamed green veg, but we didn't have any. Well, I prefer leek and pea. Could some from the garden. Mm. Yeah, actually, I will add a bit more corn flour in there. This is really done. And I've just poured a beverage. I don't normally drink by myself at home, um, but we have some of these in the fridge. This is a Le Petit Rosé by Le Houp, and it's perfectly pale and just what the doctor ordered after a busy afternoon of festive decorating. Now that is a toad in the hole! Wow! That bit's got a bit burnt, oh but everything else looks pretty good. Chef Charlie Irons never does anything by halves, my goodness. That looks incredible. Have you got rosemary in here as well? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a massive vat of gravy. Is that a mustard mash? Must, whole grain mustard whole mash. Whole grain mustard mash, perfectly oh, creme de la creme. Oh, good. Oh, it smells amazing in here, my goodness. A lot of you often comment how lucky I am to have an other half that is an excellent chef. Darling, I'm very oh. grateful. I don't say it enough, but I'm very grateful. So it tastes good, all right. <laughs> and so is my waistline. <laughs> so it should be nice. So that was a scrumptious toad in the hole, but just in case anyone was worried that Charlie was too perfect in the kitchen, I present you with yeah. the forgotten sausages. That's the problem with an argus sometimes. I just completely forgot, I had a lot on my mind. They were meant for the dogs. Aww. So actually, look at that face. Look, he knows what's happened. Oh. He knows, he can sense it. Daddy, you burnt my sausages and I'm so livid. Okay. I'm livid. Right, what we're about to do, is a momentous occasion. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try one of each of these three types of mince pies. You bought four types from MS. I think I bought six types. Okay, but so the, well, so you bought some miniature ones. I'm not a believer in miniature mince pies. You're not I'm, a believer I in bite-sized mince pies. I don't believe. I believe that mince pies are so good they need to be in this perfect form. Sorry, is miniature. that a mince pie on your plate there? So, yeah, so, so this that is, looks okay. like a scone. So let me talk you through. So these are the three because you bought lattice mince pies and equally, I think. That's, a mince pie shouldn't be a lattice, an apple pie maybe? I agree, however, having tasted them last night, I'm I sure gave I gave them an 8 out of 10 on my mince pie chart. I'm sure it's lovely, but it's not traditional. Mind you, this isn't traditional. No. This is an ice topped mince pie, which is basically like a cherry bake, well, and a mince pie had a baby yeah. together. I don't um, like how that looks. That to me is less traditional than a lattice mince I, pie. I agree with you, but I just wanted to try it. So that one's getting... I have also tried. placed, I don't know if you can see this, a large order from Fortnum & Mason. Because when I posted my Instagram story this morning about testing mince pies, everyone said we needed to try Fortnum & Mason. So they will be arriving soon. So, so which I ones have you got here? Be the winner. I'm not mad on this new packaging from M&S. It's it a little cheap, bit nasty. doesn't it? It looks very cheap. Yeah. Um, classic. All butter mince pies. They look good. I think they could be the winner. Hang um, on a second. Are you not going to heat them up? No, see, I, I like a mince pie heated up every now and again with a little bit of custard, a little bit of ice cream. Uh, not ice cream, um, cream. But I often just like them like this. Okay. Well, I will join you in an all butter mince pie so that we can compare notes. I don't know how Charlie can have a cold mince pie. I have to have mine heated up in the agar for a few minutes. <laughs> Okay, so what's the verdict? The icing one. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie, it's nice, yeah. but it's not right. No, it's not right. It's, it, it, it's, it's two things that shouldn't be combined. I agree. Like on their own individually, but I'm gonna eat it all. Of but course. Yeah, so I agree with him. <laughs> Daddy, I'd really like to have the crumbs off your plate when you're done. <gasps> Lucky boy. And some for the han han. I'm intrigued by the puff pastry. Yeah, right. Too much pastry? How's the ratio? See, that's interesting because well, I'm doing them in order. Right. Of what I meant they'll rank as. Yeah. Yep, and down and bottom up. Yeah. 
This is nice, but yeah, possibly not enough filling. And is puff pastry not a bit savoury? No. No? But good amount of sugar on top. See, I would that's say... That's a good amount of sugar on top, though. Yes, it is, but I would say I that's would not enough sugar on top. that the puff to mince ratio is mm. too heavily in favour of the puff. I think this would have been better heated up. Yeah. I think they all are better heated up. Look at that little sweet chessy. Look at that sweet chessy. Oh, what a lovely little sausage. <clears throat> right, on to the big, big one. All right, so this one you reckon is going to be the best? Yeah. All butter mince pie? Straight away, that's up there. Yeah? Mm. How does it compare to Dalesford? Well, once again, the Dalesford ones are good heated up. But, yeah. But the Dalesford ones, I think they have to be heated up. Like, I've eaten them before and it almost feels like they're raw. Right, so I've presented Charlie with the chart. So. I mean, it's classic. How are we going to score it? 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10? Yeah. Sorry, but that's as high as a heated up Dalesford. Yeah. And then you puff. You are joking. You 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 score too highly. You gave the Waitrose seven and a half out of ten. I mean, how are you going to go up from here? Well, that, I I actually I, I already know that that traditionally the M&S is my favourite. So one. you wow. Ten out of ten doesn't exist. So what are you giving the large Dalesford, or are you going to wait until you've had another heated one? Hmm. I, I need to have another one. Right. Okay. I've got a couple in the Arga, but I already gave the lattice M&S seven to out of ten. I refuse to eat this for one. No, that's my highest ranking so far. Yeah, but I ref I'm not eating small mince pies. All the more for me then, mate. Can I, sorry, can I actually get you to write that down? Because later on... It, I, in... don't, I don't believe in small mince pies. <laughs> right, I've got it on we film. You don't believe, do we? You're an absolute sausage. So here we have got the M&S Lattice, which yesterday I gave a strong 7 out of 10. Lilla, there's one for you as well. <gasps> Thank you very much. 7 out of 10. Mm -hmm. um, and here we have the one that Charlie has just given, a 9 out of 10. So I'm actually going to start with this one because I'm less familiar with the classic all-butter M&S. Right, let's give it a try. How would you rate the Lattice? Hot. <laughs> Hot. Well... I just got a mouthful of pastry and no mince pie there. Oh dear. So that's not a good start. That's an instant point drop there. Because the ratio of the spread is not... It's not got anything on Dale's with Linny. No, I'm sorry. That's not a 9 out of 10. That is not a 9 out of 10. Oh dear. I'm going to give that... Seven. Well, I gave the lattice a seven. Uh, no, I think that's a seven as well. Seven you think out of ten. Well, oh, I'd almost give that a 6.5 because I think the lattice is better. Okay, darlings, my evening cleansing routine is done. I'm just going to pop on my... I'm using the Beauty Pie Super Retinol Vitamin C Night Renewal Moisturiser. Look at my hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm very much enjoying using this. It seems to be, my skin seems to be really enjoying it at the moment. My Beauty Pie £10 off discount code should still be working by the time this video goes live. So it's Josie sent me at the checkout, which will turn your uh, Beauty Pie Plus annual membership, which is usually £59, into £49. Or you can use it on the monthly, but I definitely recommend getting the annual Beauty Pie Plus um, membership. You can get so many luxury beauty products for the most incredible prices. I'm pretty sure the RRP of this is around £70, but I think I got it for £11 on Beauty Pie, which is amazing. So I'll leave all of that linked down below. So yes, I hope you've enjoyed today's vlog. Lots of festivities. Lots of delicious food and darlings, I will see you very soon in the next one.